Hello and welcome to yet another Blender tutorial. In this one, we're going to look at this retro looking image with the help of the new render engine Eevee. Make sure you're on Blender 2.8 so you have this render engine available. Okay, let's start up a new general Blender project. Left click to select the cube and hit delete. And also left click on the lamp and hit delete. Next, I'll hit Shift A. I'll add a plane. I'll scale that up with S and release with left click. Now, Shift A, add in a text. I hit RX and 90 to rotate my text. Next up, I'll change the font. So in the description, I'll have a link for the font I use for this tutorial. This is very optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can also choose your own font if you found something else, something better that you like for your project. So I'll hit the font tab over here and hit this folder icon. And up comes the file browser. So in here, if you're on Windows, probably if you have installed the font, you will find it at the C drive, Windows and fonts. So there it is. And I'll hit this icon here to clear, more clearly see um, what type of font I want to use. Now I know what font I want to use, but Let's say you're you're testing out things. It's more it's quicker to see like the font that fits your your type of project with this view instead of going back and forth, back and forth, choosing the wrong font. So that's a a nice thing to have. I'll use this dead gym .ttf. You can also search in this top right corner dead and it will show up there. So I'll open that font and you see our font has changed. Now I'll hit this arrow key here and move it backwards. All right, and I'll also move it more to the center. I'll also scale it just a bit with S. Now I'll do some extrusion like that. I'll do a bevel of one and just one click 0 0.01. I'll also increase the resolution to three. I'll separate the space between my letters in this case. I'll go to spacing here, paragraph spacing, character spacing, just hit one there and we got more space between our text. Okay, left click on the camera and then we'll move it more to the center. I'll press seven to, for the top view here, press five for a flat view or orthographic and I'll place my camera in the center. I'll press Alt R and RX 90. Now you can see my camera is pointing straight at the text, but if I orbit around, you see it's kind of missing it. So to see more clearly what the camera sees when moving it, I'm going to duplicate my window. Just drag from the top right hand corner to the left, pressing zero, hovering my mouse in this window here. And then we can drag on the left side here, the camera down. Now, this is what we're going to see in our render on the, le on the right side. I'll bring my camera closer to the text. Something like that. Now it's time to write something. Something. <clears throat> right here, here, you can write whatever you want. I'm going to write retro because this is a retro themed tutorial. Um, I'll uh, just adjust my my text accordingly to the this a bit longer word I now have. 
maybe if you write a long sentence, you have to scale it down to make it fit. Just use S to scale. Okay, next up, I'll, uh, I'll go into render view on the right side. Now we can see more clearly uh, how the render will look. And I'll press this overlay button here. Now I can more now I can see more of my render without any obstructing overlays. As of now it's very dark, it's gray, doesn't have any lights, so we're gonna add in some lights. Hit Shift A, go to light and point light. Now I can drag this behind my text and I'll move it just so it's not visible to this plane right here. I'll move it to the left and, I, and I'll change my color of the light, it's on the right hand side, to a blue color. And I'll hit Shift D and I'll do the same. I'll move this uh, blue light over to the right side and I have two blue lights and I'll also Shift D again and move it to the center. I'll choose a red color for this, so we have this cool like mixing mix of colors in here. It will look cooler as we get some some bloom effects on this, I promise. Okay, the next up we'll go to the world tab, decrease the lights to a more darker color, and then we'll go to this we we'll go to this camera tab, hit bloom and hit screen space reflections. Now we'll see that our text is somewhat reflecting in the in our floor here, but we want more of that reflection. So we'll click on the floor plane here, hit the materials tab and hit new. And then we'll go, just leave this as is, and we'll go down to the roughness tab and we'll drag that down to something like that, very low, low number. So the more, the lower this number is, the more like a mirror it will be. Next up, we'll need our background. It will reflect some light on the text as well as make the text pop more. So hit Shift A, add a cube, drag this behind the text, hit S and X to scale it on the X axis, hit S and Z to scale on the Z axis or Z when you're happy with the thickness of the of the plane here or the, the cube rather. I'll move that down just a bit and maybe a bit closer to our text here. Then we're going to add a array modifier. So hit this wrench icon, click the add modifier and array. Now you can see the uh, array modifiers has stacked my cube on the X axis, but we want to stack it on the Z axis. So I'll hit zero here and one on the Z axis and I'll drag it backwards on the Y axis right here. I can also increase the height of the, um, the cube here. So I'll just add a couple of these. Right now you can see them very clearly. So how can we fix this? Well, a pro tip is just to move the, uh, the array modifier a bit more down and it will hit the light. As you can see here, we have these lights very low to the text. The reason why we put our point lamps at the bottom here is I don't want them to be reflected in the floor of the reflective plane. Right now, it's just one more thing to, to do. I see I can, uh, I can move my camera just, just a bit more to the right. Or maybe I'll just move my text a bit more to the left. I'll increase the height of the text so it's 
kind of resting on this first step here, although it's not actually doing that. But of course you can, you're not forced to use this pink, uh, purple, bluish uh, color scheme that I got going on here. You can, you can just choose your point lamps and go nuts with the different types of colors. Now, uh, all that's left to do is just tweak our uh, glowing effect there. I see it's quite strong and our text is not really showing through that much. So we'll go to the camera tab here and go to the bloom settings and I'll just increase the threshold just a bit so I'll t our text is showing through. Now we can also go to and left click to on our text and add a, a glossy material to this as well make it more pronounced in the render. So I'll do that glossy and uh, roughness. Yeah, it's not that much of a difference, but some, it'll get some uh, effect of it. Maybe I'll go and go to my bevel options here and increase one more time. That didn't do very much. I'll move the camera just a bit closer. This is, uh, some of this is just small tweaks to make the render look perfect to you. It's maybe, it will say something else here and you have to play around with the, with the lights and everything to desired effect that you want in your render. I think we're done there. And I'll hit F12 to render and up comes my render. Now I can hit Shift S to save my PNG. Just find the place you want to save your image and click save as image. So I hope you like this tutorial. Um, I'll do more text tutorials in the future. I'll, I promise I'll uh, keep uploading more frequently now that we have 2.8 out and Blender is kind of in this new era with a new version that is more suitable for new beginners or new users and uh, I think the there are more people out there adopting this software and uh, yeah so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.